Okay, so Ryan Clark was a former athlete who immediately transitioned to broadcasting upon hanging up his football. As soon as he left the NFL, he was picked up by ESPN, mainly as a football analyst for the league on its various programs. During that time, Ryan quickly rose to the ranks and became a superstar on the network and branched out to other things like his Pivot podcast and his role at Inside the NFL. What this guy has achieved in the last decade is truly remarkable. In a day and age where every former or current athlete has a podcast, what he was able to establish with Fred Taylor and Channing Crowder on the pivot is something that not too many in the industry have been able to replicate. My only knock on RC as a talent is that sometimes he falls for the trap of race baiting on too many issues. Other than that, I think he does fantastic work. Anyways, fast forward to today and it's now being reported that ESPN and Ryan Clark are parting ways after both parties could not reach an agreement on a new contract. My assumption is that ESPN lowballed him and Ryan didn't accept. ESPN has made a recent trend of getting rid of veteran talent by offering them an extension that was probably lower than the contract that they just came off of. Unless you are the face of the company or a huge insider, guys like Stephen A. Smith, Pat McAfee, Shannon Sharp, Adam Schefter, or Adrian Wojnarowski, chances are they'll find themselves to be totally expendable. It's easier for them to just get another former athlete who just retired, prop him up on social media, and pay him on a rookie deal. That said, I want you to hear the snippet from the Pivot podcast a day before RC's contract expired on Saturday, and then listen to the end where he discusses the moment he found out that he was totally expendable. And I saw your tweet, and obviously I put my two cents on, in it on a retweet, and I spoke from the heart. I appreciate it. You know, yep. I understand, you know, how you work at this craft, how you're up, you're taking your notes. We can be f***ing off. You know, and you're over there doing what you do, man. And it was easy for me to send that tweet out, bro. You deserve, obviously, what you believe you deserve. Yeah. But your value is what, obviously, is what you take, man. I, I think, or I hope they do right by you. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a, is it a good or bad thing. I guess it's where I started because you work so much. You need some downtime. Yeah, I, I do like the downtime a little bit, like being able to chill. You guys have been through contract negotiations, though. It's a... Contract negotiations are weird, right? Contract negotiations with your own team are normally the hardest mm -hmm. because they see you a certain way, like they see you how you got in, right? They always saw me as sort of an undrafted free agent. So every contract, I'm just like, hey, look at the film, right? And so like now I'm also like, hey, look at the film. And then it's that other thing, and you know, Fred said it before, we've heard it on the show, comparison is the thief of joy. And it may be, but also, Comparison is how we set our value. Mm -hmm. It is that, hey, nobody else here has what's on my trophy case. They don't, like that's a fact, right? Nobody here, no matter what show he's on, is the thing that ESPN Social is making sure they push out, no matter who I'm on the show with. And I respect everybody mm -hmm. I work with. I know I don't get to behave in any way other than a way that represents us, the way that we're supposed to be represented and the way that we want to be seen, the way that we want to be represented, represent the network in the way that they want to be seen, in the way that they want to be perceived, and represent myself in the way that I want to. I know I can't step out of that because if I step out of that, I will not have people pushing for me. I will not have people standing on the table for me, right? Like, I gotta do everything. And that was what my post was about. It was like, I've done everything, right? And I'm very honest with them and talking because I don't have an agent now, right? You know, David Mulligetta is doing the financials of my contract because he's my friend. Like, I wanted somebody I could trust. Like, I don't, I'm not built like these people in this business, right? I'm built on, like, I want to be honest. I want to say, I've done this. This is what I've, I deserve. And so, like, I've just learned, man, that, like, you have to give yourself an opportunity to hear everything, feel everything before you make your choice. And it's funny, because y'all have been around me. The one thing my immediate boss said was this, please don't take a deal that you don't want. Because I know that'd be the worst thing for us. And both of y'all have been around me. Y'all know that too. Yeah. You, you gonna give people a hard time. It's respect. It's respect what you're doing. You are extremely talented. What you've done over the last three years, I saw the post. I see what you say, you're 100% correct. What you've done, bro, and your, what you are to this industry, real talk. Not to get emotional, but real talk, bro. It's, you're special. Appreciate you're the it, the future. Man. Do whatever you gotta do. And all I can do is you need me to jump on somebody, I'll jump on. Nah, we don't need that. I will, right? 
but it let me know that it's different for different people. Like, I'm not gonna be able to sit on my show and call out an executive by name and say that this executive is effing over me and then be in a picture with another executive the next week because he's showing solidarity with me.